Hello designers, this is Rebecca and I'm going to show you how to download both paid and free fonts to your system, how to link them to uh, your Adobe products, and how to access all of the alternate glyphs. So um, I just like to start in one of the Adobe programs. This is Illustrator and I typed out the word new fonts with uh, my type tool. So as long as you drop type, you'll be able to see a preview of it when you change it in your characters panel. So this is the character section of the properties panel right now. So to change the font or to download a new font, uh, you can just hit the little carrot to extend this drop down menu in the characters panel. And you can type in the name of a font that you already have, or if you'd like to find more, you can click on this find more button and then search for, uh, you would filter it out as to what type of font you'd like to access and then you get a small preview of it uh, in the window and it's not really my favorite way of finding new fonts from Adobe. So let me show you what I do first. I go to a browser window and I type in fonts.adobe.com and then from there I'll type in uh, something along the lines of what I'm working on. So uh, this one will be arts and crafts, so I can type in arts and crafts in the search bar along the top there, and I'll hit return. And then there is actually a font called P22 Arts and Crafts. So I'm going to dig into that in just a second. Another place that's really fun to look for fonts are in these font packs here because you can discover really cool new things. So I'll click on font pants, packs to show you how that works. If I was to type in arts and crafts, it's not going to really bring anything up. Um, I could type in something like vintage design or, you know, anything along those lines there and hit return and then hit click on font, font packs either up here in this top menu or in these buttons down here. So font packs are collections of fonts that are created by professional graphic designers or font foundries. And if I was to click into one, it shows us a preview along the top here with uh, a quick little button to get to a font that you might like. If you see images in the back that look like this, you can actually sometimes download Adobe stock templates of these different little projects back here to work with, which is pretty fun. But if I scroll down a little bit further, then I'll get a longer um, uh, a preview of the fonts individually. You can also change the sample text of what you'd like to see in this preview. So you can choose the whole uh, capitalized alphabet, the additional glyphs and symbols, or you can choose different sentences, or you can even write in what you'd like. So if you're working on a logo, it's a great idea to type in the company's name right here to see how it'll look. And then if you see one that you like, you can click into it, you can click view family, and then it will take you to see the entire family. Sometimes the family is going to have just a couple options here. Sometimes it might have 22 or more. Um, so if you like the whole family, you can click the button in the top, right corner to add the whole family, or you can click the individual uh, buttons right here. So mine say remove because I've already added this family to my library. So let's go back to that arts and crafts um, font. And one more, maybe not one more, let's see. <laughs> Great, there it is. So I can click the add family here uh, if I know that I want to link that entire family to my Adobe account, or I can scroll down and just click on the individual ones that I like. Um, you know, the, the more fonts you have, the longer it might take to load your list of fonts. So that's why you might just choose the individual ones. But I like every option here. So I'm gonna click Add Family. Then I'm gonna go over to my Adobe program that's open. So that could be InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, um, After Effects, anyone that you're going to use font, uh, use text in. And then I can type in the name of the font. Let me go ahead and select all of my font just to make sure it's selected. And I can type in arts and crafts here. Now, when I do that, sometimes I'll get the pinwheel. But it goes away in about a minute. So then I'll try it again. It's just loading that font. And I can go ahead and click on one of these. Cool. So once I have a font loaded, I can go to see all the additional glyphs that go with that font. 
uh, instead of typing out the entire alphabet and trying to come up with some interesting combinations on your keyboard, you can just go to type and then open glyphs, the glyphs panel. This glyphs panel is not available in the window um, menu. It's only available in the type menu. So that's type and glyphs. And then we'll open up this types pan I'm sorry, the glyphs panel, and it will show you all of the available glyphs within that. So there's even some ligatures here, which is pretty cool, like the TH ligature. Um, that's awesome. I love it. A QU ligature. Great. And I'm just looking to see if there's anything else that I could apply right now, but I don't see anything uh, for my words new font. <laughs> All right, so that's how you link Adobe fonts. Now I'll show you my favorite resources for paid fonts and why I like them so much. Um, my favorite one is Envato Elements because I feel like these font packs are, like these typefaces are the most sophisticated and they tend to have a lot of ligatures and a lot of alternate letters, which I really like, uh, especially if I'm paying for fonts. So you just log in and you download your file and then um, I'll show you how to add that file on a Mac. So I like to use FontBook and then I will go to my downloads folder. Most of the time when you download a font, it's going to be a zipped file. So you'll just unload the zip, un, um, uh, double click to unlock the zipped file and then you'll get your folder there. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up this Bound Hero font and you just grab the folder and drop it right into FontBook. So sometimes it might be a font by itself that is um, just like an OTF file or a TTF file, and that's totally fine. I got a little error message that said it didn't quite install, so I just tried to reinstall it again by just dropping it back in there, and then I'll click this Replace button, and it'll show me that it has installed um, successfully. Takes a little minute with the pinwheel. And then uh, sometimes I will just click this little search um, uh, icon at the top there, and I'll type in the name of the font and click on it and I can click on it here and I can scroll through and look at the different glyphs available right here or like I showed you before you can just do that um, in the glyphs panel in, in Illustrator. So I can go ahead and leave font book and go back into Illustrator and then with my font chosen I can type in my new font name here and check it out. So Bound Hero does have some alternate letters, which is really cool. Um, that's shown in the glyphs panel. And to see them, you just highlight individual letters here, and then you'll get a little pop-up of the alternate version. And you can just click on that little pop-up and change it. And then if it's only one option, um, the one that you had before will show now in the little preview at the bottom. So you can pick which one you like best, and you can go through and see what else there is. Ding. Really cool. So that's pretty fun. This one just has a few, but some of them have a ton that will have like a really cool swash on there um, or, you know, other things like that. <laughs> Great. So the free um, sites that I like are, first I check with my Adobe um, fonts, definitely, because that's already included in my subscription. But I really like uh, Font Squirrel. It's a really fun site. They don't really have any... Um, arts and crafts fonts, if I was to type that in here. I'm not seeing any results, but uh, when we get to the deco part, we can type in art deco and, and see what options they have. You can also look for some art nouveau options. So there's some nice ones. This one is really beautiful. This um, Poire one and Upper East Side is a nice deco font. Riesling is a beautiful font that really pulls me in when I see these lovely tails on the G and like, you know, these beautiful swashes on the leg of the R. But I do have to say it's kind of a hard font to work with because of the variation in letter width is just very dramatic. So, um, so if you have like a beautiful R, S or G uh, in your logo, then these are awesome options. Uh, but if you have some of these very skinny letters, they get a little bit lost. So just, you know, pay attention to that when you're when you're designing. So that's Font Squirrel, and you just go to hit the download button and you go through the process of adding it to FontBook. If you're on a PC, you're just gonna right click on that downloaded file and click add font. 
Then the other one that I like is Da Font or DA Font. This one has some great options. I'm gonna type in arts and crafts here. And look at this one. It's a lot like the arts and crafts um, uh, option that was in Adobe, but if you want you know, a little more variation, you can go ahead and download that one and add it to your uh, library as well. All right, thanks for watching.